So in this video, I'm gonna break down the real impact that the coronavirus is gonna have on you and Amazon sellers like myself as well. I'm gonna talk about what are the impacts that it's gonna have on all of the different things that you need to be considering, whether it's product research, whether it's uh, freight, whether it's your suppliers, whether they're in China or in other countries. Um, I'm gonna talk about the things that you should be focusing on, the things you shouldn't be focusing on, and I'm gonna give you some specific actionable takeaways so you can go away and look at this situation and actually either take advantage of it or at least minimize the risks or know how to make a better decision um, with the money that you're investing into this Amazon FBA thing. So if you like the sound of that, um, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already and click that little notification bell so you get videos like this as I put them out as soon as they come out. So without further ado, let's begin. So undoubtedly, the coronavirus is bad news for Amazon FBA sellers. It's gonna be bad news for a lot of people. It's not really good news for many people at all. Um, but let's talk about, first of all, let's understand how does the coronavirus really affect you? Or how does it really affect me? First guys, remember this is just money for us. Um, so I wanna get this out of the way right now that I know a lot of people are scared. A lot of people have been asking me about this. There's obviously a lot of fear um, going around in the Amazon FBA community right now. But remember guys, this is just money. We're just doing this you know, to make a living or to make money or whatever else. For many other people and for the vast majority of people actually being affected by the coronavirus, it's not just a matter of money. It could literally be a matter of life or death. So please just keep that in mind. I'm obviously talking about this from an Amazon FBA e-commerce selling online perspective, um, but you know nothing that happens here is gonna be the end of the world for us. So just let's have respect for the people that it really does impact. Um, and let's go on to the second thing, which is that the mainstream news thrives on fear. And this is the source of so much of this fear and doubt and uncertainty around things like the coronavirus is that basically if you're scared, you pay more attention. And then the mainstream media makes more money when you're scared because you're paying more attention. So they're always gonna focus on the worst case. They're always gonna highlight the most extreme perspective. They're always gonna go for stories of you know, suffering or bad things that happen because essentially business as usual is bad for the business of news. Here are some good ones where the title is actually saying something that's very positive, which is that infections ease in China. And here it says the rate of infection slows and that's the key metric. But to make this like a clickbaity title to get people worried, they have to keep saying, they have to keep talking about the deaths, they have to keep talking about the negative impact because um, that's what you're gonna be scared of. So death toll keeps climbing. I mean, technically the death toll can't go down. It can only stay the same or go up. So that's almost like a, like a non-statement. And if we look at the data, which verifies the positive part of that title, what we don't wanna see when it comes to an epidemic or anything that goes viral. So whether it's something on the internet or whether it's a real disease that could go um, and become an epidemic, you don't wanna see it going exponential, which is where it goes, appears to be flat and then it actually accelerates and the rate of infections or the rate of deaths will uh, increase very rapidly over a short period of time. And so we saw that a little bit here at the start where it started to accelerate, but what's happened now is it's completely leveled off. And that's actually a really good thing. That means we're going from this like sort of viral explosion phase where we just don't know what the impacts will be to as it starts to realistically taper off over time, we're now actually able to start looking at schedules and start seeing when things are gonna open and make predictions about what's gonna happen in the future. So it's very important to note that if you're just following the news, it's always gonna sound worse than it really is. So that's my second point. Business as usual is gonna be bad for the business of news. So effectively just don't watch the news or don't listen to the news. Third, we're now gonna look past the hype, all right? So this is what I'm gonna tell you is the real analytics behind this because I'm doing forecasting, I'm making plans for my own business and I wanna let you benefit from exactly what I'll be planning in my business. So let's look past the hype, let's look past the fear. Let's just think about what's really going on. And more importantly for you guys, what should you actually do about this coronavirus situation? So I'm gonna talk about whether you're an experienced Amazon seller, whether you're a new seller, or whether you're a complete beginner who is not yet selling on Amazon, but wants to in 2020, what should you do? So let's talk about that. First, let's do a quick rundown of what's happening right now. Today is the 12th of February, 2020. Um, so just to give you a bit of perspective, I'll be very brief here. Basically the virus outbreak, the coronavirus it broke out in I think mid January. And the reason why it's been so bad, or one of the reasons why it's been so bad and has been uh, has spread to the point that it has is that the virus outbreak actually con coincided with Chinese New Year. If you don't know, it's actually by far the largest annual migration in the world. And so what happened was all of these people who were potentially infected were now suddenly traveling to all of these different places. Um, the country was sort of shut down. There's basically like chaos going on within China at the same time that this virus is being discovered and it's breaking out. And you can see there how much bigger um, the migration within Chinese New Year is than any other sort of movement of people around the world. So a big deal made worse by Chinese New Year. What else has happened? Um, as a result of discovering the virus during the holiday, Chinese New Year has actually been lengthened by one week 
uh, basically to give the Chinese government time to start locking everything down and attempting to control the virus, which, as we saw in that graph before, appears to be working. Um, so what else is happening? Some factories have already reopened as of today. Most are gonna be reopening over a, a sort of staggered period, and that's gonna be within the next month or so. I'm gonna talk in more detail about what that really means for specific factories um, and for you if you're trying to make orders. But basically between two days ago and let's say around about the next month from now, most factories or almost all factories should be open again. Um, and again, the key thing that I want you to take away from what we've just looked at, the data, is that the virus is not appearing to go exponential. If it was, if it was spreading around the world and all this crazy shit was happening, uh, we really wouldn't be able to make plans for the rest of the year or for the coming months until we could see the situation coming under control. But it looks like it's starting to, to come under control. So now we know what's happened. Let's talk about the impacts of the coronavirus for e-commerce and specifically for Amazon FBA. And when it comes to anything like this, anything that's out of the ordinary, something that happens that, uh, that's unexpected, there are always going to be winners and losers. Now, just briefly here, I believe that some, these are some of the losers. So dropshippers, if you don't have inventory in the States or wherever it is that you're fulfilling your inventory from, you're kind of screwed at the moment. Dropshippers who are dropshipping from China, they have all just shut down their ads, they're stopped. They're just not making any money right now, uh, which is great if you're on the other side. Um, for example, you're a seller holding large amounts of inventory. Some other losers, I'm gonna say Chinese sellers are actually losers here. And again, that goes back to my first point before. Remember, for me living in Latin America or for you living in the States or wherever it is that you are, this again is just a matter of money. This is all just happening on a computer screen. This doesn't really affect your life in any other way. Chinese sellers, people who are living in China, they are living amidst um, the, the, the virus, the outbreak of the virus. So that's a real crisis that's affecting their entire lives. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say that if you're competing against Chinese sellers right now, living somewhere else in the world, you're actually at a relative advantage. Um, so what else? New sellers, unfortunately guys, if you are just doing your first order right now or you're looking to place your first order or you've just maybe launched in the last couple of months, I'm gonna say you're at a disadvantage as opposed to uh, sellers who basically have popular products with a reliable sales history because people like me, like me most of my products, we're gonna be able to look back and sort of predict with a lot more accuracy and a lot more confidence what that's gonna look like over the next couple of months. Again, I'm gonna talk about this in more detail as we go further through this video, but I mean, I'm just laying out the facts here or, or what I believe to be the facts. You are gonna be at a relative disadvantage for the next couple of months if you're a new seller because you simply, you have a lot to learn and there's a lot of additional uncertainty that's gonna go on top of what you're already uncertain about. Um, so other winners, Again, it's gonna be existing sellers, sellers who already have a lot of inventory in FBA or on the way, or maybe inventory that you had already created or already produced, you were just waiting to ship it after Chinese New Year. Things like that, basically. Uh, again, non-Chinese sellers. And I just put in here as well, if you're selling something that is related to the disease, obviously, you know, like a, a medical supply seller, you're probably gonna be a winner out of this situation. So this is a key perspective shift because I know the first instinct or the first reaction probably for yourself as well is to just think fear, to think uncertainty, to feel more doubt and to wanna to just step away from all of this. But remember, this is all relative. This is just like, it's not business as usual, but these things happen. This isn't the first time that a virus outbreak has happened. This definitely isn't the first time that, uh, you know, there's been supply shocks in China. This stuff happens over and over again. So it's very important to take this perspective of just understanding that this is all relative. I'm gonna talk about this more, how this, you can, we can actually turn this to our advantage and I'm gonna to get to that. But understand as well that if you are sourcing probably the majority of products that are on Amazon, your competitors are likely sourcing from factories. If not the same factory, then at least factories that are in the same physical uh, geographic region in China. So what this is gonna mean is that more or less, your competitors are gonna be affected to the same extent that you are. Their supply chain is gonna be equally affected. They're gonna be having the same problems getting their products into stock, just like you are. And if it's all relative like this, it's gonna come down to, yes, it's gonna be an inconvenience, but more so it's gonna come down to how well do you play the game? And I hope that I'm teaching you how to play the game well. So I hope that you're gonna be one of those good sellers like I expect to be, who actually can take from a tough situation, turn it to their advantage. So that is, what was that? We're talking about winners and losers, impacts. Let's talk about impacts to suppliers. So like I said, like I've alluded to, the impact is gonna vary a lot based on the region and the specific factory. So I can't tell you which specific factories or what particular products are gonna be open when. If you've got suppliers that you already work with or you have suppliers that you wanna work with, just ask them, 
email them and ask them. They will be upfront about you know, what they are doing. I'm gonna give you more context though, so you know maybe the right questions to ask. Um, you could, for example, look at this map, if I zoom out of this, and you'll be able to figure out where your supplier is, which region they're in. And, and by the way, particular types of products are generally concentrated in particular regions, right? So you may be looking at five different suppliers for the same type of product. Chances are they're probably all pretty close together. Um, so you could look at this map and I'll leave the links. By the way, I'm gonna leave all of this stuff in, uh, in written format in the Amazon FBA uh, Nomads group. So if you want to join that group, it's completely free. I'll put a link down below. You can just hop in there and you'll be able to copy this if you wanna you know, save it for your own use. Um, but you could look at this website and go and check, you know, is your region affected or the, the region where you're sourcing your products from, is that affected? But the best thing to do is going to be just contact your supplier and ask them what their specific time frame is gonna be. Now, when you do that, understand, I'm calling this two phases to get back to normal production. So you've got the first sort of milestone, which is, is the factory actually open? And like I said, as of today, which is February 12th, uh, most or some factories are starting to come online and within the next couple of weeks, or I would say until early March, most to all factories are gonna be pretty much online and running, right? So you have a, a potential delay of potentially no delay if you're lucky. And if you're unlucky, around about one month. But what you need to understand, particularly if you're a new seller, if you're new to this whole Amazon FBA game or sourcing in China, after every Chinese New Year, this is something that happens every single year, we have this second period, which is where essentially, when everybody goes away on holidays for Chinese New Year, all of these workers leave their factories and they go, normally they live, or their families, sorry, live in these regional villages and small areas in China. So they go back home to visit those families. And a lot of those people never come back to the same factory, right? They, they, they'll go and get a job somewhere else or they'll just change something in their life. And so every Chinese New Year, after the holiday, most factories deal with a very high rate of employee turnover. Um, so why do you care about this? The reason why you care about this is that what happens is that after every single Chinese New Year, product quality goes down and then a lot of the timelines become an issue because basically fact, some factories just don't have employees to fill their orders. Now, the reason why the coronavirus is gonna make that a lot worse this time is obviously all of these workers are now quarantined and they're all gonna take a lot longer to come back. So a lot more are just never gonna come back. So you need to be aware whether you've already been through a previous Chinese New Year or this is your first one, whatever order you place or have placed, you need to be very, very vigilant of your product quality. So that means do not skip any product inspections uh, when you're getting your product shipped. Don't let anything leave your factory without it getting fully inspected. Um, also expect additional delays. So even if your factory tells you a particular timeline, it could be longer than what they tell you. And I would say that it probably will be longer than what they tell you as well. So we're definitely dealing with an extended timeline of delays here, but it's very important that you understand that there are these two phases. So it's not just, is the factory open? You actually need to know, do they have the workers to really fulfill the order that you wanna produce? So that's supplies. Let's talk about impacts to shipping and freight. And I'm gonna split this into air shipping and sea shipping. So with air shipping, first of all, you're actually gonna have a double whammy price increase. Uh, the reason why is that air supply, a lot of air cargo anyway, actually goes on passenger flights. And I'm not sure whether you know this, but basically lots of passenger flights to China, to and from China have been canceled, obviously, to try and prevent the outbreak from spreading. So with less passenger flights, that means there is, there is less cargo supply or capacity on these planes to actually carry air shipments. So since there are less passenger flights, there's gonna be much more relative demand, right? Um, second effect, I think, that's gonna impact prices for air shipping is that as a lot of these delays that I just talked about, um, as they become apparent, what you're gonna get is a lot of businesses diverting their shipments from what would have been a sea shipment into air to try and get back into stock in Amazon as fast as possible. So air shipping is gonna probably suck a lot, particularly in March, as you get this like production coming back online and everybody trying to ship using air. Uh, this email from Flexport, they are looking at rates spiking three to four times. And this is a precursor, they say, to what we might expect in March on Chinese exports when production is largely back online. So if you need to ship via air, you can probably account for or expect a very large price increase with your air shipment, as well as potential delays. Now, sea shipment, I would also estimate that you're gonna see significant price increases happening in March, but I believe the effect is not gonna be as not as massive as it is with air shipments. And honestly, nobody really knows at this stage. Anyway, definitely talk to your freight forwarder to try and get a good picture from somebody who is on the ground and dealing with these issues. Um, the only other thing I'll say about, about sea shipping impacts 
is that the real shipping delays are going to happen due to ports in China being closed or potentially quarantine restrictions. For example, the ships arriving at the States, but then being quarantined and not being allowed to actually offload. And one final note, this is a question that quite a lot of people have asked me. Um, is there a risk of actually getting the virus like being contained within your shipment and therefore being exposed to you know legal risks or getting people sick and getting sued or something like that? Uh, that's not a risk. So I did some research on this. The virus itself only survives for a few hours on surfaces. So basically the, the packages itself are not a risk. The, the real risk is that the virus spreads via the people, which means you know the people on the ships or the people on the planes, um, the people working to, to, to transfer that freight. But the package itself, no issue. So we've talked about some impacts and we've talked about what does the situation really look like now, what should you do now and later on in this year? I'm gonna go through, I think I've got five or six things on this list, things that you can take away and do or not do. So first of all, don't go to China. This is kind of obvious. You probably wouldn't be able to find a flight right now anyway, but stay away until the situation stabilizes. And remember, as somebody who is not in China, you right now have an advantage because the rest of your life is life as normal and the rest of your business is business as normal. People who are in China, Chinese sellers, people who are on the ground there, their whole lives are being affected and obviously they have the risk of, of actually catching the virus. So right now you're at an advantage, keep that advantage, don't go to China. Um, you know, if you wanna source things, just push all of that out, I'd say until at least the second half of the year. For example, even the Canton Fair, that's just suspended until further notice. So, you know, you won't be going to that in April anyway. Um, so don't go to China. Number two, product research. So this is obviously a common question. Um, what does this mean for your product research? So the real impact that this is gonna have is that a lot of products are gonna start going out of stock. Like we talked about, these delays are in the number of months, essentially the long-term delays. So a lot of people are, or a lot of other sellers are not gonna be able to manage their stock very well. And as products go out of stock, when you are doing product research, you're not gonna see those products that are out of stock. So markets are just gonna start looking different. So I'm not gonna make judgments about what those markets will look like, uh, it could be that you know you're gonna have. I mean, you're obviously gonna have less products, and I would say those products will be doing better, which means the market, I suppose, will look better than it otherwise would, uh, or less competitive than it otherwise would. Keep in mind that's gonna happen over the next month, two months, and so if you're gonna do product research, I'd be looking at niches right now. As things go to stock, it'll just become more and more inaccurate. So that's number two. Uh, number three, sourcing. This is probably the most common question. People are saying, well. Now that China is you know, full of the coronavirus, is this too risky? Should I look to other countries to source your products? Um, I'm gonna urge you to think long-term before you do this. And it really depends on your niche and your product type. Um, just consider that, particularly as the situation, as we saw in this graph here, the situation is stabilizing, right? So you're not worrying about the next couple of months when you're doing this long-term planning because a product is gonna cash flow, it's gonna make you money for the next, let's say two to three years. It could be a lot longer than that, but let's just estimate that you're planning for two to three years. But this whole thing is only gonna blow over in let's say two to six months, right? So if you're planning for a two to three year time frame, but you're making decisions based on something that's only gonna happen for two or a couple of months, um, that's not really sustainable long-term planning. So. Uh, in other words, if you're building something for multiple years, like you should be if you're building an Amazon FBA business, and China right now or in the future will be the best sourcing region for the product that you wanna source, China is still gonna be the best place to source that product. It's gonna be more difficult now. So definitely, I would say you can take the opportunity to see if your specific products that you're looking at, if it makes sense to go and try and source those or manufacture them in another country like India or Vietnam or whether it's maybe locally within your own country, the US or wherever that may be, take that opportunity but understand that you're planning for the long term. So for example, I'm not looking at changing anything within my logistical supply chain. I'm just gonna try and mitigate the damages um, and take some advantage of it as well, which I'll talk about next. But yeah, China, still the best place to source for, I don't know what percentage, but the majority of products by far, and it will be in the second half of the year going forwards. And you should be looking at this from a multiple year time frame, not a time frame of a couple of months. So to conclude, should you look in other countries, Yes, you can, but don't change your whole plan just based on this little virus. Point number four, and this more applies to advanced sellers. Again, people who are already selling on Amazon, you already have a product with some sort of sales history. You have an opportunity to win here. If you can manage your inventory, you can come out of this potentially on top, potentially on top. So understand, and let's explain why. Understand that your marketplace is just a simple matter of supply and demand. It follows the same fundamentals that any economic market does, right? Which means that in this case, I mean, we're looking at this like a mini Q4. Basically, what you're gonna have is supply 
going down as people run out of stock. You're not gonna have more supply coming in because nobody can get shipments from China in the next month, two months maybe. So the supply of the good is gonna go down, but the demand is, let's assume it's gonna stay the same, which it should, which means that the price should go up. And if you look at this from, a, from an economic perspective, that's what happens. So in other words, for you as a seller, if everyone else is out of stock, you can dominate the market. And this is what Q4 is like for our business, and we're treating this like a mini Q4. So here are the priorities, and this is what we're doing as well. Here are the priorities for you to manage your inventory well and to win and to beat your competitors and to take this problem or this barrier or this fear or this challenge and turn it into an opportunity. And this is what I always like to do, whether it's with Amazon FBA or anything else, is turn things that turn other people away and get other people scared and turn that into something that I can take advantage of. So priorities, what should you do? Number one, have close communication with your factory and your freight forwarder. Get updated timelines from them, speak to them. They're probably already doing updates because obviously everybody's gonna be asking them anyway. So you know, you're know you just gonna be another person asking the same thing. They'll have the information, ask them, make sure that you know what is their best estimate for, uh, firstly, for your factory, when are they coming online? What does it look like for their workers? Be upfront and be very specific as well, asking about their workers. Remember, if, you don't, if you're not aware of that thing, they'll probably just tell you, oh yeah, we're, we're all good. It's not gonna be the case. Ask them specifically how their work, how their uh, worker turnover is going. Do they have enough people to do it properly? You know, What are they doing with training? All that sort of stuff. But get the timelines and then get the timelines from your freight forwarder so they can tell you about uh, cost increases. You know, Is the supply demand there with, with freight? How is that shifting? What sort of delays can you be expecting? And from that, from step one, you can calculate your best case inventory forecast. And that's gonna be, if what they told you is correct, then you can calculate how many days it'll take to get your inventory back into stock. And so you know, you have that point, if everything goes well, when do you get your stock in? And maybe you never run out of stock, in which case you can dominate the market if other people are running out of stock. If for example, you stocked up just before Q4, or sorry, just before Chinese New Year, or if for example, you had a shipment that was pretty much done over Chinese New Year, and now all you need to do is to ship it out, you'll be one of the first people out of the gate, you'll be one of the first people to get your product back into Amazon. So you know the best case inventory forecast, then, and here is the, the prudent, responsible thing to do, calculate a worst case inventory forecast. And by that, that could be anything here, you're just sort of guessing a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is double the best case restock time. So if people tell me it's gonna be ready in one month, I'm gonna say it's actually gonna take two months. So between the best case and the worst case, you're gonna know how much room you really have to play with. What stock do you have available in Amazon FBA right now? How long is that gonna last based on your, your current sales velocity? Uh, between the best and the worst case. And that's that's it really. Then you know how you can manage your inventory. So last thing, first step four, manage inventory, monitor your competitor stock levels. You can use the 999, uh, you can use Jungle Scout or whatever to track their stock levels, or you can just follow and see as they start going out of stock. And here is, I, I guess the controversial part of this is that you do wanna slow your sales. You wanna maximize profit. We do this every Q4 and last Q4, we made over $200,000 in profit in one month by doing this is, allowing us to maximize profit by increasing our price. What you'll see in this simple sort of economic supply demand situation, when the supply goes down and demand either stays the same or goes up, you as an Amazon seller have the ability to re increase your price. So do so, maximize profit, dominate the market and win. All right, so I know that's a little bit of detail. If you're a new seller, that doesn't really affect you. But if you're an advanced seller, please take this in mind. I would love to hear your ideas down below as well if you have um, some additional ideas for things you can do to manage your inventory to come out of this on top. Make sure to share them in a comment below. And lastly, or second lastly, reorders. So again, this affects people who have proven products. If this is your, I would say your second or third or more PO, you know how well the product sells, you know that every time you've gone out of stock, you've been able to get back into stock and re-rank again, then just commit. You wanna get pushed through that backlog. You wanna be one of the first people to get out of the gate with your shipment when all of this stuff normalizes. Again, whether it's one month, whether it's two months, whether it's three months. So do what do you, whatever you need to do to get pushed through that backlog. So maybe that means uh, committing to an early deposit. If you've got the cash to spare, commit to an early deposit or talk to your supplier to see what they want or a larger order. The fact is that they might tell you a timeline and <laughs> you can move that timeline if you get creative. If you incentivize the supplier, to help you through this, or if you have a really great relationship, you will be able to get pushed to the top of the queue. Um, understand when you're doing this, that a lot of these guarantees around production time and quality, like I said before, they're just not gonna hold as much weight. So I emphasized this before, and I'm emphasizing this again, do not skip your pre-shipment inspection. Do not skip your pre-shipment inspection. 
you will get burnt during any normal Chinese New Year and you will get burnt even more this time with the coronavirus if you skip your inspection. So don't skip your inspection. Point six, strengthen your relationship with suppliers. I wanna remind you here again before I finish this video that the only impact to you is some money and some numbers and you're sitting behind your computer and this really isn't gonna have that much impact to you. But think about your suppliers for a moment. They're the ones who are on the ground. They're the ones in cities that are in lockdown. They're the ones with family and friends and, and people that they know and that they love who are in a lot of trouble. They're in, they're in the middle of this crisis. So just, you know, I urge you to be human to your suppliers right now. They're affected by the virus. They have it worse than we do. They have it worse than you do. So all I wanna say here is take the time to see how they're doing. Take the time to support your suppliers. And I mean, to bring it back to the sort of fundamentals, the nuts and bolts of this, strengthening your relationship with your suppliers is really gonna pay off. Next time something like this happens, you're gonna be able to get pushed to the start of the line. You're gonna be able to get accurate estimates from your suppliers. You're just gonna get a lot of value out of doing this right now. And it feels good and it's the right thing to do. So that was the last point, the last thing that I wanted you to take away from this that you can specifically, I hope, go away and make better decisions about how the coronavirus is gonna impact you, your Amazon FBA business, uh, your ability to start selling on Amazon this year. I hope I've shown you that it's, you know, it's an obstacle, it's a challenge, but this is what business is, is just dealing with these obstacles and challenges. So I hope that you can turn this problem into an opportunity. I hope I've given you the perspective, the tools and everything to do that. If again, if you wanna grab these written notes, I'm gonna post them in my Amazon FBA Nomads group. It's free to join. Just click the link down below, hop in the group. You'll be able to copy this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. I will be producing more videos. I've been gone for a little while, but I'm back. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.